Hello and uh, welcome to another video from uh, TrainingRide.com. In this uh, video, I'll be quickly showing you how to use uh, c uh, along with uh, Selenium to do web automation testing. Well, uh, all this time we have been uh, working a lot with uh, Selenium and Java. So in this video, I will show you as how you could use c uh, c -sharp is a Microsoft.NET programming language. and uh, for us to write the code in C Sharp, uh, we will be using uh, different tools. Uh, um, so let me get started with the tools first. Um, so the tool that we will be using uh, would be Visual Studio. Um, now it really doesn't matter what uh, version of Visual Studio. Um, on my machine, I have uh, Visual Studio 2013. Um, you could basically download it um, from uh, Microsoft website. Uh, it comes as, a, as the evaluation period for I think about 90 days um, you could um, uh, evaluate this. Um, so if you Google it, uh, you would um, know where to download it from. There are different versions of Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2010, Visual Studio 2012, and uh, Visual Studio 2013. Again, the version here, which is the ultimate, uh, really doesn't matter. You could use um, anyone, uh, you know, they should just work fine. Um, I'm using the ultimate because I use it um, uh, for the other classes uh, like coded UI and uh, stuff like that. Okay, so um, right now let's um, get started and um, see as how we could be doing Selenium um, with c So um, with this assumption that you already have uh, Visual Studio on your machine, uh, let's um, start a new project. You could start a new project in one of the uh, two ways. You could either go file and say uh, start a new project or you could do it uh, right here, start a new project. So I'm gonna be going in here, file and uh, start a project. Now. Visual Studio is is one of the greatest tool which is out there um, as far as uh, you know uh, building applications, testing applications. It's one of the richest tools which is out there. So you um, can uh, be uh, doing things in different languages. So that's what basically it offers. Uh, so my selection is Visual C Sharp, and that's what you see here. If you um, are curious to know like what other languages Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio supports. I could go in and then take a look in here. These are the different languages that it supports. So for our purposes, I will be um, using uh, C Sharp as the language. And uh, now if you look into the different types of the project that we could be creating, it could be creating a Windows applications. Uh, now mostly developers, they would go and then, uh, you know, build applications by uh, in Windows. So that's uh, your Windows applications. Uh, uh, you could also be building web applications and all that. For our purpose, we'll be getting into the test. So as for us um, uh, testing, uh, there are uh, you know multiple uh, project templates that you could be using for testing purpose. Uh, now, um, in our case, um, if I was uh, using coded UI, then I would have selected this template. Um, now, uh, we could, um, like in case of Eclipse, uh, you have... Uh, uh, some of the supporting frameworks uh, like uh, JUnit and TestNG and all that. Uh, here as well, uh, we have uh, um, NUnit that I could be using, but um, you know, for the purpose of this uh, video, I would just go ahead and then use uh, unit test project. Um, again, unit test project is um, is is um, can be thought of like uh, being used only for. Um, unit testing by developers, but that's not necessarily true. It's it's uh, Microsoft have done um, a good work, um, you know, in in using this uh, this type of projects wherein we could go in and and do um, our web testing. So um, this is one of the basic or introductory video that um, I am doing for Selenium. Uh, but once we get into the actual course where we will be talking about um, the complete. Uh, um, c -sharp .net, uh, uh, using c -sharp .net way uh, of testing, uh, you know, applications with uh, Selenium, uh, wherein I will be uh, doing the whole um, uh, way of building the frameworks. Uh, and at that time, I'll be covering a uh, lot of other topics, um, you know, that includes, uh, you know, creating a framework and uh, executing that framework, um, um, you know, not necessarily through Visual Studio, but uh, through NUnit and stuff like that. But in this uh, case, uh, let me just uh, start off and give you a, a simple demo of how uh, web applications can be tested using uh, Visual Studio and uh, C-Sharp.net and Selenium. All right, so um, I will be testing an application, let's say uh, it's a training right. Uh, so uh, training right. Uh, uh, web application that uh, what I would be um, 
you know uh, testing so here I go I get started now um, if you uh, have uh, seen me um, you know uh, creating these um, apps uh, um, these uh, projects in um, uh, Eclipse uh, then you know that uh, we basically go into Eclipse and then we add uh, external jar files and uh, those external jar files are Selenium um, you know web driver and all that we pretty much have to do the same over here and um, again for those of you folks who are seeing uh, this tool for the very first time I um, will uh, quickly introduce you to certain things that uh, are very important when it comes to understanding as um, how we could be writing these uh, scripts uh, using Visual Studio. Now, um, again, I will uh, briefly touch uh, and do a very basic introduction to the tool, but uh, we'll be doing a um, lot of in-depth coverage once we get started with our um, you know, course and when you look into the other videos uh, uh, that I have created um, for the Selenium c uh, um, course. So over here um, in this tool, uh, like any other tool, you have this menu items on the top, as you can see, right? Uh, without going into the details of what these um, uh, items are, they they work uh, in 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 context of what we are doing right now. So if I am like uh, creating an application, uh, then uh, these these menu items mean different, um, you know. Um, again, based on what I am doing at, at any given time. In this case, uh, since we are in the testing um, project and uh, it's a unit test project, um, so uh, let me um, basically touch uh, only those things that uh, are needed uh, from our point of view. So uh, this is uh, a project, so right on the top, you see this using, using, and if you see in here, using system, and uh, these are namespaces. Uh, um, trying to understand namespaces are something like um, you know you would need like in case of Java like you have packages uh, so here we have namespaces uh, so uh, you import those packages uh, right um, so you got to be importing those uh, you know namespaces in here depending on you know what we intend to do so uh, the, since the uh, goal here the the objective here to do the uh, testing with Selenium so uh, let's go ahead and add the Selenium library here so the way you're going to be adding Selenium library is uh, first of all uh, I'm going to go and then download uh, the uh, cshop.net. Um, so I'll say Selenium Web uh, Driver Download is what um, I would search for. And as you can see, uh, we come to this uh, website. Um, and over here in the download tab, if you scroll down a little bit here, uh, you would see that uh, we have, uh, based on what language we have, we got to be downloading the um, you know the web driver bindings. Um, so here I go, uh, C sharp, and I download this C sharp. Um, now, uh, when you download that, um, uh, at the time of this recording, the uh, the version of Selenium is uh, 242. So that's what um, I would be uh, saving actually. So I save. Uh, so let it download, and uh, once it gets downloaded, uh, it's a zip file. So I'm gonna go and then extract it. Uh, uh, probably it's still uh, um, downloading show all downloads so I'm gonna go in here open it uh, uh, take it uh, um, and uh, copy it into let's say one of the folders that I would be creating here um, selenium um, oops if I could sell, uh, type selenium um, selenium C sharp right okay so in here I would paste in since it's a zip file let me just go ahead and then extract that now as you can see um, selenium um, or rather the dot net um, 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 basically comes as different uh, versions so if you see over here um, we are um, at the time of creating a new project it will ask you what version of uh, .NET you would like to .NET framework would you like to use um, and we are uh, working with uh, .NET 4.5 I guess uh, if I'm not mistaken uh, there it is so the .NET framework is uh, 4.5 this happens to be the latest and the greatest at this time of recording this is the latest uh, version so uh, we are using .NET 4.5 uh, so uh, over here 
these are slightly older libraries, but uh, that's uh, basically what is the latest at this time. So they're all compatible. So I can take uh, the latest uh, from Selenium uh, bindings is uh, .NET 4.0. So I'm gonna take this, so I'm just gonna, um, uh, these are all the uh, DLLs that I need to uh, add to my project. All right. So since I need to add, these are the references to my project. So I just need to know where they are. So I have extracted them. As you can see, I have extracted them. So let me just, uh, they're still in a zip file. So let me just uh, take uh, all of these, um, copy and come back and put it into here. Let's say, um, create a new folder call it uh, uh, net uh, 4 right okay so in here dot net version 4 I'll, I have all my all my DLs right so I have to I have to add them to my project the way you're going to be adding them to your project is if you recall in Eclipse um, you go into the project properties and then you go into the add external jar files right uh, you remember so over here you don't do anything like that you basically come over here um, to your uh, this is your solution and this is your project and in in Visual Studio you you have the hierarchy is you have the solutions and then you have the project and inside the project are you know uh, anything and everything that you would need as a part of this project so um, I need to add those external um, I don't want to call it them as a jar files but rather the DLLs so that can be done by going in into the references right click on references and say add a reference so when I click on add reference um, it is going to take me into the existing uh, .NET framework, right? But I don't want to go into the existing .NET framework and look for that because these are not internal, uh, you know, um, DLLs or, or assemblies of .NET. These are Selenium, um, you know, bindings that we have uh, downloaded onto our machine. So let me just browse to that uh, folder where I have downloaded it. And I know that I just downloaded it into uh, C drive, Selenium, C sharp, and then I created this. So these are where all my DLLs are. So I'm just gonna go and take all these uh, uh, DLLs and say add and hit okay. And once I do that, um, that's like uh, telling the project that, okay, I have added those external jar files into this. So again, since this is not Java, this is .NET. So these are DLLs or assemblies that we have added uh, to a part of our project. Once we added them over here, now we need to go and, and mention that we are going to be using them. So the way we do that is uh, basically we say that, um, okay, uh, the libraries uh, that I need to uh, use uh, would be as follows. So I would say uh, using, using, and uh, uh, th this is open, open QA, open QA dot uh, Selenium, right? Okay. Now in C sharp, like Java, you you terminate with a semicolon, so that's what it is, right? So that's what we did. And uh, another one is uh, I also have to have uh, the browser that I need to use, right? So uh, which browser I would be testing. Now before the browser, these browsers, on the browsers, you'll have all the UI elements, uh, which is, uh, you know, your your text boxes, your, uh, you know, labels, your buttons, your drop downs, and stuff like that. So we have to have a namespace for that as well. So using uh, open QA dot, uh, of course, Selenium uh, dot, um, I think it is support, uh, it is support dot UI. Okay, so we take that. Now, uh, now that I have these two uh, namespaces, um, now, depending on which browser I would like to use, I would be doing using, um, again, open QA dot uh, uh, Selenium dot, uh, now, um, let's say we want to do a testing for Firefox. So I could just go ahead and then use Firefox, right? Um, so down the road, if I decide to use something else, I could be using something else. Uh, as an example, let me just uh, just copy up to this point uh, 
and uh, do that and see uh, what are the browsers it exposes. As you can see, we have a support for Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari. So depending on you know which one I want, I could just go ahead and then if I'm doing a headless, uh, then I could use the Phantom JS as well. Uh, this is for the headless testing. So um, right now, um, I, since I have Firefox, uh, let me also use uh, um, Chrome if I want to or Internet Explorer, right? So uh, this is basically what uh, I have to. Okay, now that uh, we have all that going, uh, let's get started and look into what, what are these things. Now, since this is a project that we have named as Training Ride Web App, right? Uh, web app, I should I should have said web app testing. So um, over here inside this inside this project, uh, now if you recall uh, in um, what's I'm call in Java, um, based on what what sort of uh, uh, framework we use, uh, we have annotations, right? So we have something similar here. So these uh, these uh, things in the square brackets, uh, which are right on top of. Uh, the the class and right on top of this this method uh, so these are called these are called basically um, in here we call them as attributes right so uh, we want to decorate uh, a, a class with an attribute uh, specifying that this is a test class likewise uh, this is a method if you can see this is a test method one and we are decorating that inside the class as a test method so this is nothing but uh, an annotation going back into JUnit or test ng here uh, we are saying that it's uh, it's basically uh, an attribute so inside uh, inside my project this is my project I have I have a class this is my class right and inside the class I have my methods right these are my methods now there's no hard and fast rule that I, I have to take what it has given I could just uh, go ahead and then rename it for now I'm just gonna leave it as this uh, um, just so that uh, you get an idea uh, this one this one um, I could either get rid of it and and type it myself or or take it the way it is and then make some minor modifications to it so this is this is my test method the name of my method here is uh, test method one well uh, I don't want to call it as a test method one I want to call it like whatever I want to call it like say for example um, uh, login login uh, test right um, so let me be more specific training right login test okay good um, now so inside this inside this uh, method I'm just gonna go and then um, write my code okay in order to write my code first of all I have to go ahead and I have to instantiate um, um, what is called um, a web driver object so um, in uh, Java again I mean one of the reasons I keep uh, going back to Java is uh, uh, chances are whoever uh, is doing this course they either have already completed Java or going to take that Java because uh, um, you know um, doing a selenium testing with Java is uh, is extremely hot uh, at the same time um, you know selenium with C sharp is coming up and a lot of companies are slowly um, you know looking uh, for skills uh, in this area meaning that uh, uh, well, uh, we do know that you can do testing using Selenium, but can you do testing using Selenium with C-sharp.net? So that's uh, basically what we are trying to do in here. So um, to write the code uh, here, I have to go in and I have to, uh, you know, create an object, uh, the web driver object. Now, um, the web driver object comes uh, from an interface class. Uh, this interface class is the iWebDriver. So here we would go ahead and say iWebDriver. And uh, I will basically going to instantiate an object. So let's say O oh, web driver equals uh, uh, new, and this uh, would be like a Firefox uh, driver, right? Okay. So now that uh, I have instantiated this uh, web driver object, um, what do I want to do with this web driver object? Well, uh, what do you want to do with the web driver object? You basically go and then. Uh, you know uh, since it's a Firefox object you want to open up a, a Firefox browser and then go to a particular site right so let's see how we do it so I would say OWD dot 
uh, navigate. So this IntelliSense, this window drops down and exposes to you all uh, the uh, possible methods um, that we could be using in here. So navigate is uh, uh, something that I, I would take us to where navigate would take us to. So we are saying that, hey, uh, I want to go. I want to go. Uh, go where? Go to this URL. Which URL? Well, you could uh, basically go and mention uh, the name of the URL. So uh, we would say trainingright.net. Well, um, we could always, as a part of our best practices, uh, we could uh, declare a variable and then we could assign this as a part of the variable and then uh, you know do that. So I'll, I'll you know, um, I'll keep it pretty basic uh, right now in this uh, case, and then later on we'll come back and then see once it starts to uh, run and work, uh, we're gonna come back and see how we could enhance this script. So if everything whatever we have done so far is 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 um, uh, is correct, uh, then at this point um, I should be able to go ahead and navigate to trainingright.net using Firefox driver. Okay, let me see if I could do that. So let me just save it. And to run it, you could just right click anywhere in this method and then say run test, right? So and when you do that, uh, the first time, uh, probably it's gonna take a little extra, uh, you know, few seconds, um, you know, the first time because it has to uh, build it uh, and then uh, do that. Uh, uh, there it is, so now it had opened the browser and then this is a Firefox browser, it opened the browser and it did navigate to trainingguide.net. Well, I'm very happy because it is, it is listening to what I want uh, it to do, right? So um, uh, now we'll come back again and then I'm gonna be talking about uh, all of these uh, other panels or, or small windows like, uh, you know, what is a text explorer, wh you know, what does it mean? And basically, uh, just to give you a, a very uh, quick uh, idea of what it is uh, it gives you the statuses of, uh, of the runs of your tests uh, and then it lists out the the total number of tests that you have and whatever you have executed and then you could uh, sort of like filter in terms of like you know what what do you want to see do you want to run uh, based on the project or uh, the duration or the or particular classes it's going to filter that and then show you sorted based on that um, so um, right now, since we ran this and uh, there, I mean, hardly we had anything in there. So, but it did, uh, took about seven seconds and then it did, uh, execute that TR, uh, you know, login test. Well, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue. Um, so let us, uh, see what we intend to do in here. Basically my goal here is, uh, um, if I go to Google, um, I, I can see what I want to do. Uh, first of all, let's say we would like to go to this uh, trainingright.net uh, website. And on this trainingright.net website, if you see, I have, uh, if you scroll down on this, uh, we have this one, right? So I would like to go ahead and then I would like to uh, automate this where I could go ahead and I could log in. So uh, let me just manually do it. Uh, so my company phone number is 732-998-6650 and the password is password and if i click on submit let let me see if it uh, basically takes me in and as you can see here it does take me in right so um what i uh, what i intend to do in here is uh, basically uh, automate the whole thing right automate the the login portion of it so let us see if we can do that. So in order to automate that, I uh, I have opened the browser. Next thing is I gotta go and then click on that um, you know menu item and then I gotta do that right. So um, training right and net. Okay. So we go there and we scroll down and I need to click on that. If I need to click on it, um, I need to know, uh, I need to locate this, right? I need to locate uh, on the browser, right? Uh, so one of the ways I could locate on the browser is using, um, uh, like I could pretty much uh, bring up my menu bar and see if I have the um, Firebug, right? I could use Firebug. Since I don't have Firebug and uh, I'm not in a mood of like uh, downloading the Firebug and all that, so I could uh, use the developer tools uh, for uh, for Google Chrome and try and see uh, if I could do something like that. Uh, so here I go and um, um, with my 
uh, here if I go in here right click and if you see here you have something called inspect element so uh, when you whatever element you are dealing with just go in here right click on that and then it, it gives you the option of uh, inspecting and then finding out the properties or attributes of that particular element so if I need to find out some details of this I could just go right uh, click and inspect element and then that should tell me few things about it so as you can see it tells me that uh, the ID of this is txt phone the name of this is txt phone and the class that it is using is txt field so some of the things that it is it is telling me so I could use the ID or the name and then um, write the code to put some uh, thing in it. Okay, so the way I am going to do that is uh, uh, I will um, go ahead. There are there are actually multiple ways of of doing that. Uh, I mean, I could I could literally write some code, uh, and, you know, and and handle it, uh, you know, the way I want to handle it. Or um, uh, let me see. So I have the web driver. So I could say a a. Uh, web driver I want to go to this particular um, um, or let me show you a slightly different way of doing it uh, this is this is uh, probably you would like it uh, uh, or you might not so uh, but since we have already seen hundred different ways of doing it in uh, um, um, in our Java class so here I'm gonna be doing it slightly differently so uh, let's do it this way so what I'm gonna do is uh, I will I will um, use um, something called uh, I web element. Uh, it's a web element interface, and what this web element interface does is it allows you uh, to create uh, an object of 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 any particular type. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, let me just write the code and the, you will get to see. So uh, we want to create an object of the type uh, phone number, right? So this is a phone number. And if you are coming from a QTP background, this is a web uh, uh, edit. Uh, and if you are if you're coming from Selenium background with Java, then you know that it's uh, basically you will be able to find that uh, element. It's a, it's a text uh, you know, box and then you would be able to uh, you know send keys to it and then you do things like that right so something like that we could do it uh, here as well using something called a iweb element so we will we will create an object of that type so that's a phone number uh, text box right so i am going to do a phone number uh, text box so it's a phone number text box and that phone number text box is basically uh, our web driver web driver it is going to find that element so um there is something called a find element so find element now uh, find element uh, by what so we will say that the find element so you have to uh, go ahead uh, and use a locator so uh, you can be finding an element by an id or by name or by a tag name by a css class name so in this case i could use id because i already know as a matter of fact uh, we have this uh, ID here as a txt phone right so let me just say by uh, by ID by ID and um, I have to give the name of that uh, ID right so the name of that ID was txt phone lowercase txt phone all right okay so um, here here is basically the object has been created so this phone number text box is that object now all right okay beautiful now that the object has been created the next thing is what do you want to do on that object so i i use that object and then i could if there is something already in it i could clear that object so i could use this uh, uh, clear method on the object right and the next thing is uh, um, i could say phone number dot what I want to do in here send keys right if it is a drop down I could have selected something but now I'm gonna be sending keys and what I want to send in is uh, uh, let me see seven three two nine nine eight six six five zero right okay that's what I wanna I wanna oops sorry that's what I wanna send in there okay now let me just save it um, and uh, let me just uh, uh, right click on it 
and run this test to see if it if it will do what I want it to do. So it should open up a browser, right? Navigate to trainingright.net, and in that box, it should locate that box because of that, and then it should put this 732998. Beautiful. Okay, uh, so the next thing now is, uh, it did everything, whatever we wanted it to do, right? Okay, the next thing now is, uh, again, uh, create an object of uh, the next type. So what would be that? So that would be this, right? So I'm gonna go password, so right click and say inspect element. So that's gonna be what? With a name of TXT password. So uh, coming back in here, now notice how easy it is going to be. I, uh, a web element, so we are creating an object now. So this is password uh, text box, right? So password text box, so you say that a hey, web driver, go ahead and find it for me. So you say find element. This time, find element by, by what? By name, right? Now, is there any reason I'm doing it by name? Okay, just to give you an idea that uh, we can do it by both uh, by name as well. as. So what is the name here? So let us look into the name. The name is txt password lowercase. So I will put txt password as lowercase. Okay, now that I have the object, which is which object? Password text box. So I'm gonna take take the password text box. If there was already something into it, let's say if it was caching, I mean, you never cache a password, uh, but you never know. If you say remember or something like it might do that. So um, you clear it and then you will send keys. Okay, so while sending keys, uh, I am exposing my password here, which is fine for this purpose. L later on, I'll show you as how to mask it. So that's that. Um, so I'm gonna save, and if I really want to test it, I could do that, but I'm not gonna do it. So let's go and do the third part, which is the submit button. For the submit button, I will right click on that, inspect element, and see. So name is BTN submit right name is btn submit so let me just this time i'm just gonna copy now so i'm just i'm gonna save some time and um so this is this i would say it's not a text box it's a submit button so submit um, button you can name it whatever you want right it's not not necessarily that uh, now um what was that this was btn submit Okay, so this is going to be lowercase btn uh, submit, and since it's a submit button, um, I am going to, uh, you don't clear the submit button, so that part is going to be gone. So what do you do on a submit button? Let me just uh, remove this altogether. Uh, and submit button dot what do you do on a submit button you don't even send keys on that right so uh, basically you would say ah we would like to click the submit button why not so click right on the submit button okay beautiful so here we have so let me just save it right click on that go here and do what and run the test when I run the test let me see what it can do um, so there it is, it uh, brings it to trainingright.net and it goes there, it enters that, 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 and there you go. So you have uh, uh, logged in successfully, right? Now, if you wanna uh, maximize the browser, you could have done that uh, right here. Uh, after we open it, I would say that uh, a uh, web driver, um, I know uh, you uh, can manage yourself, uh, so I want you to manage by doing what? By uh, making this window, making this window, right? <laughs> what do you do to the window? You maximize it, right? So you maximize the window. Okay, beautiful. Um, let me just save it. Right click on that. Now the whole purpose of uh, you know uh, showing you these things is uh, you know uh, Java right now it should maximize it. And there it is, it did maximize and it did everything so fast. My, first of all, my machine itself is too fast and the secondly, um, you know, uh, since we did not uh, let it sleep or put in a, a weight in there. Now, you might question like, oh, uh, how do you uh, slow it down, right? Well, uh, that's what we gotta be learning in our upcoming videos. So in order for you to learn everything, um, I would strongly encourage you to visit our website, uh, trainingright.com, uh, uh, trainingright.com, uh, dot com and uh, 
uh, you could just uh, uh, scroll down to see what uh, courses we are starting and what are the upcoming courses. Uh, as you can see that uh, very soon we'll be starting, um, you know, Visual Studio, Coded UI, MTM, uh, Team Foundation Server. And uh, the next course that we uh, will be doing uh, uh, is both uh, Java, um, with Java, uh, Selenium Automated Software Testing with Java, and also we'll, we'll be starting uh, with C-Sharp.net. For those of you folks who are unlimited students, meaning that if you have already bought uh, multiple packages, so you could uh, get the C-Sharp.net course uh, uh, as a part of the package. You don't have to pay anything extra. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, I hope to uh, see you again in the uh, next video. Until then, um, you know, uh, be safe, enjoy, and uh, happy testing.